Camp Chef shook up the pellet grill world this year by announcing a new feature for their Woodwind Pro called the Smoke Box. It allows you to add chunks of wood or charcoal and supposedly it gives you more smoky flavor in your meat. But the big question is, does it work? And that's what we're gonna find out in this video. I'll be smoking a brisket and we're gonna find out if the Woodwind Pro lives up to the hype or if it's all just smoke and mirrors. Let's get smoking. Starting at 7 p.m. the night before, I'm setting the Woodwind Pro to 180 degrees Fahrenheit and preparing for a long overnight smoke like I normally do with my pellet grill briskets. But unlike my normal pellet grill briskets, I'm adding some cherry and applewood chunks to this smoke box. And this is where I ran into a bit of an issue. The smoke box didn't want to fully close because it was getting hung up on the open butterfly valve. That's the thing that controls how much fire from the burn pot gets into this smoke box. I knew this was an issue, but despite moving the handle that's supposed to close the butterfly valve, it just didn't want to go back in. But after a bit of jiggling, it finally seated properly, so I was back in business, as long as this didn't keep happening. I then added a large foil pan to the bottom rack of the Woodwind Pro and I filled it with water. I do this to block the radiant heat below from burning the bottom of the brisket, which is an ever-present problem in any pellet grill. This is the only way I've found to truly solve it. Luckily, the Woodwind Pro has a very spacious upper rack, so I can fit a water pan in and get my brisket up and away from the hottest areas of the grill. In my opinion, the upper rack is an absolutely essential feature if you wanna cook a great brisket in a pellet grill. So, so far, I'm liking the design of the Woodwind Pro for this reason. I then placed my brisket on the top grate, inserted the probes, and I poured myself a glass of whiskey to finish the night off because I don't need to even look at this brisket for another 12 hours. But before I enjoy my whiskey, I like to take a Z-Biotics so I'm ready to be refreshed and energized in the morning. Z-Biotics, which is the sponsor for this video, is a probiotic drink that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol. It's called acetaldehyde, and it is most responsible for rough mornings after drinking. I just drink a bottle 30 minutes before having an alcoholic drink, and while I enjoy a whiskey or two with my friends and family, it's working to break down the toxic byproduct that's building up in my gut. I've taken notes on how I feel when I take Z-Biotics and when I don't after a night of drinking. And what I've found is that when I do take Z-Biotics, I just wake up feeling a little bit more refreshed, a little bit less groggy, and most importantly, I feel more productive and motivated throughout the day. That is the biggest thing for me. And it's also important to me because Thanksgiving and Christmas is coming up and there's gonna be a lot more casual drinking with family and friends, but I still need to get up and crank out these videos for you guys. But don't take my word on it. If you don't feel it works for you, there's zero risk because they have a 100% money back guarantee. Thanksgiving is coming up, so order a pack of Z-Biotics so you and those joy joining you around the table can indulge a little this holiday and still feel thankful you did the next day. Go to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ or click the link in the description section below and use my code smoke trails BBQ at checkout to get 15% off your first order. All right, let's fast forward to the next morning and check out how this brisket is doing. At 7 a.m. in the morning, I'm checking on the brisket and it's starting to develop a really nice bark. The long overnight smoke at a super low temperature allowed the pellets to smolder and create a lot more smoke and color on the brisket. I'm not sure whether the extra chunks in the smoke box added any additional color, but what I can say is this brisket is looking how it would normally look after 12 hours at 180 degrees, regardless of what pellet grill I'm using. Now moving on to the next stage of the cook, I'm adding ice to the water pan to cool things down because things are about to heat up quickly. I'm increasing the temperature to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which normally would be insane for a pellet grill and it would burn up your brisket really quickly, but I have that big heat sink in the form of a water pan full of ice, so it's gonna be just fine. The result is going to be we get a nice gentle convective heat over the top of the brisket at a high enough temperature to render the fat cap. Now the brisket is going to smoke away for another five hours and every hour or so I'm dumping the burnt chunks out of the smoke box and I'm adding fresh chunks. You can see as I pull it out, the chunks are producing a lot of smoke, which is a very good sign. It's really hard to argue that the smoke box isn't doing anything when you can visibly see smoke coming off those chunks. Unfortunately, I was still having issues with the smoke box. This handle just freely turned instead of operating the butterfly valve, which is the reason I was having problems the night before. So I tightened the little set screw with the included Allen key that came with the Woodwind Pro and it snapped the set screw, unfortunately. So 
Now it kind of just turned the butterfly valve, but the handle was also turning freely because the set screw was broken. Not ideal, but I'm also not getting angry because I fully acknowledge that it could just be operator error. I maybe twisted the set screw too hard and snapped it, or it was just the incorrect way to install it. I could have just messed up and maybe every time I touch the smoke box and open it up and burn myself, maybe it's because my fingers are too fat. I don't know. This is not a review video and I'm not going over the Woodwind Pro in detail. I wanna cook on it for a little bit longer before I do my full review. It's noon now and it's been around five hours at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm probing the brisket to see where it's at in terms of temperature. The brisket is probing somewhat tender and it's in the temperature zone of around 180 to 190, depending on where I probe it. As I've said in a lot of my videos, I don't like taking brisket above 190 because I think it dries it out. So I'm removing the brisket and wrapping it in tallow soaked butcher paper, wrapping it in foil with half a cup of water added, and I'm holding it in my electric smoker at 150 degrees for six hours, at least six hours up until dinner. You can also hold it in your oven if you want, just make sure you don't skip this step. It needs the extra holding time when it's pulled off the smoker at or below 190 internal. 100% always needs that hold time. And if you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I recommend holding briskets for anywhere from 12 to 16 hours at 150 degrees Fahrenheit after you pull them at 190 internal. And that is the case when you're doing a regular cook that starts at 225 and then ramps up to maybe 275, 300 and takes 12 hours. But in this case, we've done such a super low and slow cook over 12 hours and then another five hours to six hours at 300 degrees that if we held it for an additional 12 to 16 hours, it would overcook the brisket. So that's why we're only doing a six hour hold in this case. Plus if you held it for 12 to 16 hours using this recipe, the whole cook would span three days, meaning you put it in on Friday night, you cook it all day on Saturday and then you hold it and you wouldn't even eat it until Sunday, which is super inconvenient and personally wouldn't work for me. All right, let's cut into this brisket and see how smoky it is. All right, let's check this guy out. Looks good to me. All right, we got some nice dark bark. Smells smoky. That's a good start. Let's cut into it. So this is where I normally stop and I think about how the cook went because if my knife is coming up against some jerky-like resistance at the very bottom of the brisket, that tells me that I burnt the brisket a little bit too much. It happens a lot on pellet grills because you get a lot of that radiant heat from below. But in this case, I didn't feel that at all. I think because we had that water pan in there protecting the bottom of the brisket from the radiant heat. So I'm pretty happy so far and I think this is gonna be a good brisket. And I am correct. Look at that, that looks beautiful. This is a great looking brisket. It's got nice dark bark. It's juicy. Let's try to slice it. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Let's slice the point in half, like so. And then we can take some slices here. It's slicing like a dream so far. I can feel the fat right now. And the fat is really well rendered on top of the brisket. I'll give it a, oh, didn't cut all the way through there. Rookie mistake. You can see that the fat is uh, kind of yellow on top. That's a good sign. Uh, it didn't render all the way through, uh, but it's still pretty soft. If I squish it here, you know, it comes apart really easily. And uh, nobody is gonna complain about that at the dinner table. You, you can see some of this uh, caramelly type yellow color starting to render in, which is good. And I attribute that to pumping the temps up during the last part of the cook to 300. But let's give this thing a taste. Mmm, juicy, perfectly cooked. It is smokier than a lot of pellet grill briskets I've had in the past. I can immediately notice that, immediately. I'll take another bite of this. Mm-hmm, yep, that's smoky guys. Mission accomplished. Definitely mission accomplished. It does taste smoky. In fact, it's probably the smokiest pellet grill brisket that I've ever personally made. You can really taste those smoke accents and it hits your tongue in a different way than most pellet grill briskets. It's not as smoky as an offset smoker brisket by any stretch, but it is very smoky. And there is some nice smoke flavor that I don't normally get from a pellet grill on a brisket. So 
That's great. If you're a brisket nerd like me and you're always looking for ways to level up your barbecue skills, then consider joining my Patreon page. I'm always releasing early access content and behind the scenes content, and you'll have the ability to connect with me and a community of like-minded barbecue enthusiasts directly on a Discord channel and influence the direction of my videos and my research. So I hope to see you there, and I'll definitely see you in the next video. Happy smoking.